The defending national champions may in fact be the best team in college football for 2017. They sure looked like it against a decent South Carolina team and completely annihilating them in the first half en route to a 34 to 10 win in which the final result wasn't even that uh, uh, that indicative of the dominance of the Tigers against the Gamecocks. We bring in Ryan Cantor from Shaking the Southland to give us a little perspective on the Tigers to date, but uh, look ahead also to a crucial ACC championship game appearance against Miami. Ryan, let's talk about this uh, dominant football team that obviously had the one slip up against Syracuse, which has been the cause of much debate in ranking this team in terms of the Kelly Bryant injury factoring into that. Uh, maybe giving them a mulligan overall for the one game on a Friday night on the road against uh, what we thought maybe at the time was a decent team, but has certainly slumped uh, in the late going in the uh, Syracuse Orange. Uh, just your thoughts about the performance against South Carolina. I certainly caught the important parts of the game, and I've got my thoughts about that uh, dominant defensive line to start. Yeah, Clemson completely shut them down. They couldn't run the ball. Jake Bentley was rattled. Um, an early pick six by Ryan Carter, who's been – um, he's a senior and he's really blossomed into a very, very good football player. Um, got the game started with a 7-0 lead for Clemson and there was really no looking back. Um, South Carolina was outclassed in every aspect of the game. Uh, they just couldn't line up and compete in the trenches at all. Um, and it was 20 nothing, and the game was over pretty, pretty quickly. I was trying to compare that South Carolina team to some of the decent teams on Clemson's schedule, i.e., Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, some of the, somebody in that range. Of course, North Carolina State and South Carolina played, and the Gamecocks beat them, although it was a long time ago in week one by a touchdown, and thinking that South Carolina, though I had no um, indication that they could compete seriously in the fourth quarter, would make it a much better game. And I bring up that Clemson defensive line because that may be what uh, distinguishes this team in getting back to a college football playoff in a national championship game because against the South Carolina offensive line that's been much better against a decent competition over the last five or six games, uh, got healthy and was able to play the same offensive line over the last five games of the season. The Clemson defensive line just completely outclassed them. And Ryan, I would have to say in my evaluation of this team, which of course I watch the big games, you watch every game, part of the game against South Carolina that's not going to get a lot of play is the special team. So on one particular punt, Clemson receiving, Hunter Renfro runs away from the punt and South Carolina gets distracted and the coverage team draws to him while they have a perfectly placed punt inside the five yard line that they didn't stop from going into the end zone. On the flip side, just prior to the Ryan Carter interception, what set it up was, of course, excellent punting and punt coverage by the Clemson team. And this happened several times where you saw distinct differences between South Carolina's punt coverage and Clemson being able to just be a smarter, more, more poised team. And I think that really showed up in this game. Yeah, um, Hunter Renfro and Ray Ray McLeod both fooled the South Carolina coverage team. Uh, on separate occasions where they kind of ran off to the side, ran forward a little bit, and it caused the, the uh, coverage team to hesitate and not get back to where the ball was and the ball rolled into the end zone. Well, it could have been a great punt for them. Um, and then you mentioned the one punt where we pinned them inside the one, or right along the one yard line, which is a great punt. Will Spires has been very good. This is his first year of punting after Andy Teasdall was our punter in the previous couple of years. Um, and Spires has been really, really good. He's a good punter um, and he really creates an advantage for our team. We've had, um, a lot of trouble with our kicking game as far as field goals since Greg Hugel uh, towards ACL in practice game has been really good. Um, a big plus for this, uh, this team. It's especially helpful because the style of offense is very plodding, uh, meticulous kind of offense, not the explosive home running offenses that some two from Clemson. And so field position is even more of a premium. And then the only other two things I'll note that stood out to me was, of course, the ridiculous play that Hunter Renfro made on the uh, pass out in the right flat in which he was actually face masked that should have been called. And that didn't bring him down. And then he somehow spun away and outmaneuvered and outran and out cajoled five different South Carolina defenders maybe two or three of them that are actually faster than him, certainly bigger than him. And he broke away and ran for that ridiculous touchdown run in the clear. That was certainly a great play. Uh, Kelly Bryant on a particular play in which he threw the touchdown pass to Hunter Renfro when he was in the end zone. I thought that just showed the maturity of Bryant. 
He bought some time. He extended the play. He didn't hurry it, didn't rush it, even though he, a couple defenders were closing in. Then he and Renfro obviously were on the same page in regards to Renfro separating at the last second from the defender that was he, he was engaged with to break free, and Bryant uh, hit him for the touchdown. The, that just shows a team that's in sync, that's, that's playing confident football. And then even with the big lead at one point in the game, there was a touchdown drive in which Clemson basically didn't give up, but they basically said, okay, we're not going to rub it in your face. We're going to play a very vanilla offense. And they ran the ball from the spread every play, and they basically either had the quarterback run or Bryant would give it in the uh, run pass option in the zone read. And on a fourth and seven, Bryant just took off. He just took the direct snap and the offensive line was so dominant. He just took the edge to the corner on, on a fourth and seven run play and easily picked up the first down. I just, that's when I saw, okay, there's a huge gap between these two teams and Clemson is just this dominant, especially along the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And I think it's in the trenches where Clemson has an opportunity to win an ACC championship and, and maybe even compete, maybe even win another national championship. Um, South Carolina's had, I think by their standards, a pretty good year, uh, came in, uh, with eight wins and they'll finish the regular season eight and four. That's, you know, that's not too shabby. <laughs> this game proved there still, there's still quite a big gap between the two in-state programs. Um, a lot of their success this year, well, totally well deserved and I'm not belittling it is a matter of playing bad Tennessee and a bad Florida and a bad Vanderbilt, um, Missouri before they were playing well. And so that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to beat those teams, but, um, just not in, at all ready to compete, uh, with Clemson. They're, they're not, two, three win different from Clemson. They're light years different still. They're improving though. I think Mustang is doing a good job.